ever scroll through those incredible iPhone photos online and think, how do they do that? Well, today we're going to try to figure that out. We're diving deep into how to really get the most out of your iPhone's camera. And we've got a great source to help us out this YouTube video called iPhone Camera Settings for Incredible Images. Love the title. So what's the first thing we need to know? Well, this video really emphasizes getting those settings dialed in right from the start. It's like laying the foundation before you build a house. You know? Okay, so it's all about that prep work. But doesn't a lot of the magic happen in the editing later on? Oh, absolutely. Editing is key. But if you start with the highest quality image possible, it gives you way more flexibility later. Imagine you're a sculptor. You can only do so much with a block of wood, but give that sculptor a big hunk of marble and, well... The possibilities are endless. Makes sense. It's like they say garbage in, garbage out. So this video jumps right into camera settings. And honestly, there are a few in here I always kind of gloss over. Like this first one, format. It recommends using most compatible over high efficiency. Now, I got to admit, anything that says it'll save space on my phone, I'm usually all ears, you know. I feel you. We've all been there. But think about it. Storage space is pretty cheap these days. Yeah. Right. What's not so cheap is regretting that you didn't have enough image quality to work with later on. Most compatible basically means you're capturing more data, which is especially important if you're into editing. True, true. I think I've been too focused on saving space and not enough on, like you said, the quality. Okay. <laughs> Most compatible it is. What's next on our settings checklist? Pro Raw Resolution. This one's for the detail obsessed out there. If your iPhone supports it, the video recommends maxing it out at 48 megapixels. 48 megapixels. Whoa, that's a lot of megapixels. I mean, I do have that option on my phone, but I've heard some things about 48 megapixels not being as good in low light. Hmm. That's the truth there. Yeah, that's something people devote about a lot. And it's not a simple answer. Higher megapixels can mean less light captured per pixel, but newer iPhones have gotten really good at compensating for that. So it's kind of up to you to experiment and see what works best. Experimentation, I like it. Trial and error is part of the fun, right? Uh, All right, what else is on the settings deep dive? JPEG XL. Again, this is about squeezing every drop of quality out of your iPhone. Ooh, JPEG XL. Sounds kind of techy, but I'm intrigued. What's the deal with this one? Basically, it's a newer image format that offers better compression than a regular JPEG. Yeah. So you get smaller file sizes without losing quality. Win-win. Okay, I'm sold. More room on my phone for more photos. Sign me up. Now, this next setting the video calls a huge hack. And you know, I love a good shortcut. It's called Preserve Settings. And um, honestly, I think I've just been completely ignoring this whole time. Uh-huh. Don't worry, you're not alone. But it can be a huge time saver. You know when you spend all that time getting your settings just right, but then you close the camera app and poof, they're gone. Oh, yes. The worst. Well, Preserve Settings remembers those settings for you. Wait, seriously, like what kind of settings? The important ones, your camera mode, yeah. whether you want that grid overlay, your exposure compensation, all that good stuff. Genius. Why have I never used this before? Okay, I feel like we're off to a great start. We've tackled some serious groundwork in the settings menu, but this video doesn't stop there. They actually dive in to the in-app settings you can adjust while you're shooting. And this is where things get fun. We're getting into those in-the-moment adjustments. It's yeah. like, okay, you've got your basic setup, now let's really dial things in. Right, let's get creative. So first up, they talk about using the exposure meter. I'll be honest, I usually just tap the screen and adjust the exposure with that little sun icon. Sure. Yeah, we've all been there. Am I missing out on something by not using the actual exposure meter? Well, it can give you more precise control. Instead of just eyeballing it, you're using a tool to really fine-tune the exposure, mm -hmm. especially helpful when you're dealing with tricky lighting. Precision. I like it. Taking control. Okay, next on the list, the raw max icon. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Yep. Basically a reminder to make sure you're actually shooting in raw. Got to get all that data can't forget about the data. Now this next one is something I've always wondered about aspect ratio. Does it really make a difference which one I choose? You know, a lot of people think it magically changes something in the sensor, but it's really just about cropping the image before you even take it. Oh, okay. So it's not actually changing like the quality or anything. Nope, just the composition. The source recommends sticking with 4.3. That's the native aspect ratio of your iPhone sensor. So you're not losing any resolution. You can always crop later. Gotcha. So keep my options open. Love it. <laughs> Next up, we've got AAF lock. And whenever I see lock in photography, I know it's got to be important. Absolutely. AAF lock stands for autofocus and auto exposure lock. It's like telling your camera, 
don't move. So like if I'm trying to photograph something moving, AAF lock helps me avoid any weird refocusing or exposure changes. Exactly. It can be a lifesaver in those situations. I bet. Okay, last but not least in this section, and it's a big one, focal lengths. The video is very clear about sticking to the native focal lengths of the iPhone lenses. No digital zooming if you can help it. Yeah, and for good reason. Remember we talked about digital zoom versus optical zoom. When you zoom in beyond the native focal lengths, you're essentially just cropping into the image, which means you lose quality. So if I want to get closer, my best bet is to actually move closer or switch to a lens with a longer focal length if my phone has one. Exactly. Work smarter, not harder, right? Right. Okay, so we've covered a lot here. Settings, in-app adjustments, we're becoming iPhone camera masters. But this video takes it a step further and goes through a whole editing process in Lightroom Mobile. And trust me, this is where things get really interesting. I was going to say, I'm ready to see the magic happen. Let's dive into the Lightroom Mobile part. All right, time to work some magic in Lightroom. I'm always amazed by what a difference a few edits in Lightroom can make. It's true. It can completely transform a photo. And this video is great because they actually walk through their entire editing process. Yeah, I love that. Sometimes I feel like I'm just randomly moving sliders in Lightroom. Like, where do I even start? Well, this video starts with the basics, adjusting shadows and highlights. Okay. Yeah, that's something I always try to do, but I feel like I'm never quite sure if I've got it right. Any tips for finding that sweet spot? It's all about balance, right? Uh -huh. You want to bring out detail in the shadows without making the image look flat, and you don't want to lose those bright areas. The source also uses the curves tool, especially something called an S-curve. S-curve. Okay, that's one of those things I hear photographers talk about, but I'm not going to lie, I'm not entirely sure what it does. Basically, it boosts contrast, but in a way that looks really natural. It brightens the highlights and darkens the shadows, which makes your photos look more, I don't know, dynamic. Okay, so it's like fine-tuning the image, adding a little more depth. Cool. So after curves, the video goes on to the color tab. I do love playing around with vibrance and saturation, sometimes maybe a bit too much. It's easy to go overboard. The source definitely uses vibrance and saturation, but sparingly. They also use a technique called split toning. Have you experimented with that much? Split toning is another one of those things I've heard of but haven't really wrapped my head around. What's the deal with split toning? So essentially you're adding different colors to the highlights and shadows of your photo. This video uses teal and orange. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, I've seen that look. It's very cinematic. Exactly, it creates that really cool stylized look. Very cool. Okay, after split toning, any other finishing touches they recommend? I'm thinking like grain, vignette, clarity, that kind of stuff. You got it. A little bit of grain, a very subtle vignette to draw the eye in, and they actually reduce the clarity just slightly. Oh, interesting. So it's like softening the image a bit. Exactly. Yeah. To make it look a little less digital, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, totally. Wow, we've covered so much ground today. From those initial camera settings to all those cool Lightroom tricks, it's amazing what you can do with just an iPhone these days. It really is. And the best part is, this is just the starting point. There's so much more to explore, different apps, techniques, styles. It's all about finding what works for you, right? Experimenting, breaking the rules, having fun with it. Who knows what you'll discover? And hey, while you're out there experimenting, share your iPhone photography masterpieces with us on social media. We want to see what you come up with. Until next time, happy shooting, everyone.